Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post on tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 15 a.m. Central Time. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications. For today's video, I am doing a very interactive kind of video. I'm going to be fully, fully breaking down the process of changing an acrylic design. I know a lot of you beginners might struggle in this area. I know I did when I first started doing nails. So I am trying to explain it as best as possible and I hope it helps you guys tremendously. I am going to be doing a backfill on my client. I actually recorded her last set of nails on my channel as well. So check that out. If you guys are interested, we will leave that linked. But that being said, I am doing a giveaway on today's video. I've been MIA and I just want to thank you guys for coping with me throughout this crazy process. Not only am I pregnant, which makes me a complete mess, along with that we're still moving. Our house is still in the process of getting everything organized. So our lighting is still off or audio might still be off in my background. I don't know what I'm doing here but I am going to be sending one lucky winner some not polished products the first item on the list is going to be their secret tips if you guys are not familiar with their products make sure you guys check them out highly recommend them they are very beginner friendly especially their acrylic powders they're formulated so smooth and blendable so definitely recommend them these c curves are the extra long ones and they have a very deep c curve to them and i love them for some bomb square nails so if you have clients that love long square nails these are definitely it Along with that, I'm also going to be sending the lucky winner some acrylic powders. I have chose a few of my favorites. This one is called Luminous Ladies. This is like a minty blue, perfect for the springtime. This one is like a brighter coral color. It's called Electricity. And then along with that, we're doing Tusa, which is one of my favorite spring purple colors. Very, very vibrant. Glow Me The Money, which is also one of my go-to for the summertime. It's very, very bright. And it also glows in the dark, which I love about it. And then I'm throwing in a nude color because I love my nudes. This one is like a pinky color with tons of shimmer in it. It's called Rose. And then the last item for our giveaway is going to be their Dappin' Dish. I absolutely love it. I have one for myself and I am obsessed with it. I love how it looks on my desk. It comes with this really pretty engraved diamond that says not polish up top. And then the sparkly base, which is to die for. It's been super popular on social media with Neltex, so definitely a must if you guys want to purchase it check out their website and don't forget to use my discount code that being said how to enter the giveaway comment down below what your Instagram is I'm doing them super basic and super repetitive I just feel like that's the easier route for you guys to enter my giveaways if I come up with other ideas I'll definitely make it known but for now just comment your Instagram name down below if you are a nail tech that doesn't have an Instagram name definitely recommend it it is crucial for your business however if you are just a subscriber that likes to support my channel and wants to win a giveaway just comment down below your name and that will automatically enter you into the giveaway i will be announcing the winner in my next video so make sure you stay tuned subscribe to my channel i hope you guys enjoy the video now let's get right into it Getting right into today's video, I am starting off by backfilling my client's nails. If you guys do remember this video, huge shout out to you for watching it. If not, I will leave a link so you guys can check that out if you missed it. I just did a simple red set of nails with some accent nails with little cherries drawn. So you guys can check that tutorial out as well. So for today's video, I am going to be removing her existing acrylic and applying some new colors and design over top. So that is technically what a backfill is for. You want to file down the acrylic as thin as possible and then you rebuild it with a different design. So for this step, I am using the Kiara Sky Rechargeable E-File at about nine to 10,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using the Medium Grit 5-in-1 bit from Kiara Sky as well. I love it, love it, love it. If you are more comfortable, of course, use a coarse one. That will definitely be a game changer as well. 
So when removing acrylic, I like to move constantly. I feel like that is going to be crucial for your nail to not heat spike and you definitely want to avoid heat spikes at all cost because it can be very, very painful. If you've done it on yourself, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So how to avoid it is basically using a good bit. The older the bit is, the easier it is going to heat spike. So always make sure you are changing it out. I like to use mine for about three weeks and then I go ahead and change it out. That being said, if you are doing tons and tons of clients, you wanna make sure you are constantly changing it out. I know Tex will change it out as much as once per week. And even though it seems like a crazy amount of time to change it out throughout the month, trust me, it is a game changer. You will dramatically tell the difference if you have a worn out drill bit versus a brand new one, your time is gonna go down dramatically. So I'm just going in and filing vertically up and down. I feel like I get a better grip of my hand piece if I file this way. And then I just lightly file around the cuticle area as well. I am focusing only on the acrylic on this nail. All I'm doing is removing the acrylic. I don't wanna damage the natural nail because I will be prepping it. And if I go over the natural nail at this point, you can over file and you definitely want to avoid that as well. And I'm constantly moving my e-file. Very, very important that you do not stay in the same spot for very long, especially when you are working on the natural nail plate. If you are, like you see here, filing on the tip, it is okay to spend a little bit more time in that area as it's not attached to her actual skin and she's not gonna feel that heat spike. However, do not get a little too carried away with it. So just make sure you're constantly moving as you can see in the video. I am moving from left to right, right to left, up and down, from the top to the bottom. I am forever moving as I want to make sure that it's not getting hot. So I hope that kind of makes sense and I hope that explains quite a bit of the backfilling process. But it's very simple once you get the hang of it. I don't mind doing them at all. Of course, they are a little bit more time consuming, but in the end, I feel like the time that you take to apply a new tip, shape it out versus backfilling, you end up taking the same amount of time. So to me personally, it does not bother me at all. And also you can upcharge this service. I always charge extra for a backfill versus a new set because like I said, it is a little bit more work. So once I'm done with the e-file and I'm comfortable with that thickness of the nail, I'm actually going in with my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file or whatever hand file you have and you like. And I am going to be shaping out these nails while still filing that thickness just a little bit more. I feel like it's terrifying to get too close to the natural nail with an e-file because you can damage the natural nail. However, with the hand file, you have a little bit more control. So I like to go in with this extra step. It just ensures that everything is super, super smooth. I don't have any ridges, which is kind of crucial to your application once you're done backfilling and you get it at its thinnest possible so that you can go in with another color and the color underneath isn't gonna show dramatically. 
As you can see, she has tons of layers of <laughs> acrylic that I have backfilled already. She has that red, she has pink. I know we did orange, nude. So that's where you see all the layers as well. I think it's kind of cool too. Sometimes my clients will have their nails on forever and it's like a little surprise every time I file down and I'm like, where did that come from? And then I remember exactly what set I did on them. So again, just going very, very careful with my hand file and lightly getting them a little bit thinner. Once I'm done using my hand file, I am going in and prepping the natural nail. For this step, I'm still using my same rechargeable e-file. Now I have moved my e-file speed down to 4,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using my mandrel bit and a sanding band from Profiles Backstage. These are medium grit. They have become my favorite and I love that they are purple. So for this step, I am making sure that I'm removing any lifting my client might have. We did go about five weeks in between her last set. So she did have a little bit of lifting. She's a hairstylist as well. So she tends to not wear gloves. I know this specifically because she's actually my hairstylist. So that causes a little bit more water damage and lifting than a regular client would have. So I am always aware that she might have some lifting at least on a few fingers and I make sure that I go ahead and remove that fully. So I focus on that lifting and I just gently file that away because the acrylic that she has left on her nails are extremely thin at this point. This process is super easy. So I just go ahead and flick it away gently with my e-file and then I am gently buffing away the shine from the natural nail to properly prep the nail so that the acrylic that I'm about to lay adheres properly.
Once we're done buffing away that shine, I am focusing on that cuticle area and I wanna make sure that I'm getting rid of any gunk left behind, any dead skin that I might have missed with my mandrel bit. For this step, I am using my needle bit from Amazon. They are linked in my Amazon storefront. I am just gently removing that excess dead skin from around that area. This is going to be crucial so that that acrylic really, really adheres to the nail. You might feel like you are prepping the nail correctly, but when you go in with this step, you realize you missed quite a bit, and that definitely does affect the longevity of the acrylic stain on the natural nail. So I'm just going in and repeating that on the rest of the nails and then we're gonna be working on the cuticle area. Now for the cuticle itself, I am using my cuticle ball bit. This came with that needle bit and one other one. Like I said, they are linked in my Amazon storefront. I have now moved my e-file up to a speed of 5,000 RPMs and I am gently buffing away that cuticle. I do not like nipping, so if you relate and struggle with that, make sure you guys check out these bits. They last forever and they're so, so soft. It's definitely not going to damage the client's skin and I get a lot of feedback from them and it says that it's like a little massager on their skin. So that's always a good thing and I'm just gently buffing away and I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails. I'm not quite sure if you guys can hear that, but somebody is getting their grass cut and it's going to drive me nuts in a few seconds. So I apologize for that background noise if you do hear it. But I'm taking a lint-free wipe and some swipe, really, really cleaning off that dust and dehydrating the natural nail. This also helps with the adhesion of the acrylic. Once I'm done cleaning that natural nail, I am going in with Triple X Bond from Not Polish. And I'm going to be adding two layers of this. So first I'm going in with one layer on all 10 fingers and then I go in with the second coat. I feel like the second coat really does make a difference with the acrylic adhering really well. So if you do your prep as best as possible and you feel like you're thoroughly doing it and you still have issues, try adding a second layer of that primer of whichever primer you're using and that definitely should do the trick. Now for our acrylic application for today's video, she is going to Disney. So she showed me a few photos and I'm basically mashing them all together and creating her a set. So she says she's going to be using different colors for her outfits for the few days that she's gonna be over there. So she was steering more on the pastel side, which is perfect right now for springtime. So I chose three different springish colors and I am going to be doing like a vertical ombre and then a horizontal ombre. So that's kind of cool. I'm definitely not super overly focusing on that ombre to be perfect because once you put all three colors on there, they look so well together and it doesn't really matter if they're super blended. When you add that nude over top, it brings them all out and it just looks super, super cute. So I'm adding those three colors. For the colors I am using, the Profiles Backstage Acrylics, I talk about these quite a bit. They're super, super pigmented, which helps when doing backfills because you still get those beautiful colors, but they are so pigmented that you don't have to worry about the color underneath showing. So for the purple, I am using Plum Sherbert from their acrylic line. 
And then for our pretty, pretty blue, this one is Blueberry Sherbert. And then the pink is actually from Kiara Sky. That one is called Power Moves. So I thought all these three colors looked really well together. That's why I'm pairing them. I don't tend to stick to one specific brand. I like to give all the options and whichever one works better for that specific set is what I'm going to be using. So I am going ahead and applying that on the tip and for our nude, I am using light sand. It is such a pretty nude and it definitely is more on the pink side, which I appreciate it. It goes so well with her skin. And like I said, it is very important that you try to match it as best as possible and you don't want the color to clash with the client's skin. So I felt like this one matched flawlessly. So now for the actual explaining. So I'm just adding the three colors on the tip like I mentioned. I'm not overly trying to ombre it. I focus more on the nude ombre aspect because that is going to stand out a lot more. The blend, whenever you blend it into those colors, it's definitely a lot more important. Now this really pretty Mylar acrylic is from the Candy Crush collection from Profiles Backstage. It is the lime one. Everything will be linked down below, so if you guys are having issues accessing these products, they will be easily accessible in the description box. So make sure you guys always check out my description box. I'm just adding a thin layer of that over top of that ombre. She wanted a little bit of sparkle, and the original set she showed me was full on glitter. However, she preferred the mylar effect, and because she still had those colors underneath, I asked if it was okay that we did the ombre and then add the mylar versus going in directly with the mylar you would still be able to see the reds and the colors that she previously had. So it is always important that you explain things to your client and not just do it. My clients are super open to my suggestions at this point. So I feel like communication is key in these certain aspects. I know a lot of the time your client might be super stuck on one thing, but it is important to explain to them why it's not a good idea. Now I have had instances where they do not agree and I do it their way anyways, and then it doesn't look right. And then I feel like at that point, it's a learning experience for them to be a little bit more trusting with me. So it's like a win-win situation. I know sometimes it kind of sucks, but I always thoroughly explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and suggest other versions if I feel like it's going to look better or if it's gonna work out better for her nails. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that. I'm also adding glitter over top of the thumb as well, specifically because she had so much red and I couldn't really get it any thinner without getting too crazy on her natural nail. So I went ahead and just left it and I'm going to add a little bit of that Mylar over top so that it camouflages it just a little bit. I did go ahead and do the entire application on the other hand and now I'm going back in to the middle finger and I'm actually just going to be doing nude on this one as we're going to be doing kind of an accent design on it. Again, still light sand from Not Polish. I'm just adding a good amount over top of that. It worked out perfectly because she has lighter colors on her middle finger. So the colors are not gonna show through and once you add the design over top, it's going to really camouflage it and you're not gonna really be able to tell she had anything under. So I'm just going ahead and applying that and then we're going to be encapsulating these nails. And 
I definitely need to get better at mentioning the brush and the monomer. For today's video, I am using the acrylic brush from Not Polish in the size 12. Along with that, I'm using their monomer as well. I'm going to be encapsulating these nails because you want to protect that design. And I'm adding a good amount to add a little bit of thickness to that as well. I'm just using the Not Polish Clear Acrylic for this step. And basically you're just adding a layer over top to protect that design, especially when you have glitter or mylar, you want to do it. And I mentioned it in my last video that also when you're doing ombre, you wanna protect that ombre so that when you go in and file, you don't ruin any of that blend. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing that and then we're gonna be moving on to our filing. Going back in with my e-file, I moved my e-file back up to eight to 9,000 RPMs. Still using my five and one bit for this step. I'm going gently around the cuticle area and then vertically up and down the length of the nail, trying to get that as smooth as possible and making sure that the cuticle area is nice and flush to the natural nail so that it does not cause any snagging, which leads to lifting. You wanna make sure that that area is nice and flush. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this process and then we'll be back with our hand file.
I'm going in with my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file and I'm going to be filing the sides and making sure that the shape is nice and crisp. These are her natural nails, so I really tend to focus on the shaping as I feel like they just look so good and so clean whenever it's a natural nail, obviously with tips as well. But because natural nails do not wear down like plastic tips do, they just hold their shape a lot better, I feel, in my opinion. So I find this part so satisfying. So I'm just going on both sides. And then I do flip the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective. If you do not know what that looks like, just click on any of my other videos and you will understand. But I tend to get out of frame whenever I am doing that step. So I leave it out of my videos just because it's definitely really, really hard to move the camera just for that one little step. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that and then we're going to be moving on to our nail art. Very quickly, I am buffing the surface of the nail on both middle fingers as I'm going to be doing nail art on them. I don't really need to buff any of the other nails because I'm just going to be adding top coat as the finishing touch. So now I'm going to be taking a lint-free wipe and cleaning the surface of the nail thoroughly. I just wanna make sure all the dust is out of the way so that when I go in with my nail art, I do not ruin it with any dust particles. So for our accent design, I'm going to be doing kind of like a sweater nail art. So I'm just taking this white gel paint from Profiles Backstage. It's the white one from their frosting gel paints. And I'm doing two lines down the sides. And then I'm going to be doing like a knitted design on both sides. And we're gonna be doing Mickey Mouse heads on the middle section. So I'm just doing three little ones. This is such an easy design, super, super quick. It took me like no time to do it. Um, and I'm also going to be adding a little bit of texture just because that's technically what a sweater nail consists of. So in order to get the perfect sweater nails, typically I would top coat the underneath and then go in with the design and add that texture. However, like I mentioned earlier, she is a hairstylist and she doesn't like wearing gloves. So I wanna make sure that I'm protecting the design as much as possible. So now I'm going in and adding those little Mickey Mouse heads. I just start off with one big circle and then add the two little ears. Nothing major, super, super simple, but you get the point across. I thought it was so, so cute. So now before this is dry, I'm not adding it into the light. I'm not flash curing it with my little light at all whatsoever. You wanna make sure that it is still fully wet you're going to be pouring on some acrylic. You can either do clear acrylic, white acrylic, depending on what it is. And if you're doing red, you can do red. So it's specific to the actual design that you're wanting to get. Um, for this one, I'm actually taking that light sand color and I'm gonna be sugaring it over top just to give it a little bit more pink hues to it and so that it matches just a little bit more. So all I do is take my nail, my long, long nail, or you can use a cuticle pusher, but I'm taking my long nail and just picking up some of that powder and pouring it right on top of that wet gel paint. And then of course, we're gonna repeat that on the other hand and be placing them in the light for a full minute. Once we are out of the light, I am going in with my top coat. This is a stain resistant top coat from Young Nails. I talked about it in my last video as well because it is crucial for your hairstylist clients or any client really that wears really light nails and comes back with stained nails. This is a game changer, it's a lifesaver, I love it. It's also like scratch resistant. I feel like it doesn't become dull at all whatsoever. So I'm going ahead and applying that very well and I am making sure that it's a very thin layer. I still wanted some of that like texture to pop up through the top coat. So I'm not adding that very thick at all. 
And of course, we're going back in the light for a full minute. I like to do the 90 second option on the Kiara Sky light because it's going to fully, fully cure and just ensure that everything, all the layers are fully cured. Once we are out of the light, remember this does have a tacky layer, so I'm taking a lint-free wipe and some swipe and very, very vigorously <laughs> removing that. And then we're gonna go directly in with our cuticle oil from Profiles Backstage, my favorite ones that I talk about all the time. It melts right into the skin, smells so, so good. And then I'm going to be taking my finger and just really massaging that into the skin. You wanna make sure that it doesn't leave like a super oily cast specifically for videos and pictures. That basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys later. Thank you guys for bearing with me. However, I wanted to do a get...